Loving Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity that I have to talk to everyone here. I pray that the words I speak are not mine, but yours, and that we can really connect with something in this message. And I just pray that it glorifies you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so today I want to focus on two of the Bible readings, the one from Isaiah and the one from the Gospel of Matthew. And the reason I want to do this today is because I want to touch on prophecy. Now, for context on Isaiah 42, we can look towards the end of chapter 41. And this is where God makes a challenge to all the false gods that the people were worshipping at the time. And Isaiah 41, 22 says this, Tell us, you false gods, what is going to happen. Tell us what happened in the past. Then we can check it out and see if it's really true. Or announce to us the things that will take place. Tell us what will happen in the days ahead. Then we'll know that you are gods. Do something. It does not matter whether it is good or bad. Then we'll, we will be terrified and filled with fear. So we see here God challenging all these other gods. If you're really gods, do something. Show yourself. Make us amazed. Tell us something before it happens so that we, when it comes to pass, we will know that you are gods. And I just love the way that he challenges these fake gods because in the next verses, you see God doing exactly what he has demanded of these non-existent fake gods. He tells us of what is to come through the Persian king Cyrus, which was fulfilled 150 years later. Now the reason I want to talk to you about this is because prophecy is one of the strongest arguments for the inspiration of the scriptures. The fact that God has spoken in advance of things that would happen, giving the names of people, places, and detailing the events that would be happening, and the fact that they have been fulfilled, is such a powerful reason why we can all trust the Bible. The question was put to me, what about today's mediums, the fortune, fortune tellers, etc.? Can they predict the future or prophesy? Now, throughout time, there have been many false prophets. People who can say they can predict the future or know something about others because of spirits. And people put trust in them because they claim to know the truth. Now, to prove someone knows the truth, two things need to happen. What they say needs to come true, and it's necessary that they have 100% accuracy. And this is why the Bible talks about the dangers of these things. Their words are enticing, but even if one word is not true, it is not from God. And you see, Satan is very clever. He knows us. And just like a parent can predict what a child will do in a situation, he can predict what we are going to do. And so if we are not careful, we can listen to warped words that proclaim truth. But remember, if even one aspect is not true, it is not of God. Because no one is omniscient except God. Not the devil, not mediums, not fortune tellers, not horoscopes. So as the Bible says, be wary of them. Now with the Bible, you have thousands of prophecies that have come to pass exactly as declared. From my point of view, that begins to give extremely strong evidence that it is indeed God who spoke throughout the Bible. And one of the examples of this is in Isaiah chapter 42, our Old Testament reading. The Israelites are worshipping other gods, stuck in this cycle of repentance and sin. And so God, through Isaiah, tells the prophecy of a servant, a righteous servant, who we know is Jesus. And Isaiah begins to prophesy concerning this. And I've got a bit of a different version here. And it says this, Here is my servant, I take good care of him. I have chosen him. I am very pleased with him. I will put my spirit on him. Now, if we skip ahead 700 years, we see the gospel reading from Matthew. And it says this, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. Jesus saw the spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. And here is amazing prophecy of God's plan throughout time. In Isaiah, God says that he is giving us a servant. He is pleased with him, and he will put his spirit on him. In Matthew, Jesus is sent to be baptized. God is pleased with him. 
his spirit is sent upon him. Keep in mind there are 700 years between the two writings. And sometimes I think we forget how amazing the fulfillment of scriptures are and the implications it has for us. Now it is estimated that Jesus fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies through his life, death and resurrection. Now I'm not mathematically inclined but there's people who do the odds of someone fulfilling this amount of prophecy and they say it's staggering. And mathematicians put it this way, if this works. Can we just go to the next slide? Yeah. So one person fulfilling eight prophecies is, if you go to the next one, one in whatever that number is, I can't say it. If you know and can say it, go for it. No? Okay, cool. One person, and if we go to the next one, one person fulfilling 48 prophecies is 1 in 10 to the power of 157, which I believe is 157 zeros after the, that. One person fulfilling 300 prophecies is only Jesus can do that. And it's, it's true. And it's the, amazing, it's the magnificent detail of these prophecies that mark the Bible as the inspired word of God. Only God could foreknow and accomplish all that was written about Jesus. The historical accuracy and reliability sets the Bible apart from any other book or record. So, what does that have to do with how we are to go and live our lives? Firstly, we can trust the Bible. God has proven throughout that what he says is truth and will happen, which importantly means we can trust God and his promises for us in our lives. Secondly, we all know we must strive to be imitators of Christ, to live as he did. We must be people of our word. We must continue to strive to live what we say, live our faith. The Bible proves that when God speaks, it is truth and will happen. And if we are live, to live like Jesus, we must also speak truth, live what we say, let our yes be yes, our no be no. And I want to illustrate why I think that is so important. And to do that, I've brought with me two drinks. I've brought with me some, some OJ, because I do like a bit of OJ. It's one of my favourite drinks. But I also brought with me some chalky milk. Because who doesn't like a bit of chalky milk? Ah. So, I really, really enjoy drinking juice. And I really, really enjoy me some jockey milk. And this is how we can be. I want to explain a bit. When we speak, it must be truth and it must happen. If we proclaim to be followers of Christ, yet we do not show love to all people, If we proclaim to be followers of Christ and yet we don't help the people in need, we're not living as Christ. <clears throat> <laughs> so say we wake up one morning and we go, oh Lord, I love you and I want to follow you. And then throughout the day we say, I hate that guy. He's the worst. He's so rude. Or we go on our Insta story and we put, post something talking about giving to the needy, hashtag God is so good, hashtag blessed. Yet, when we see people in need, we don't do anything to help. We're not living like Christ. Or even if you're one of the little ones, you say, I really want to help mum and dad today. I'm going to clean my room. And then you make it even more messy. And we go back and forth and things just don't sit well. Trust me, it's not sitting well. <laughs> because, you see, we can't combine the two. And if I leave this here, 
you'll see it was, it's already starting to happen. It's, there's a separation there. The milk is curdling. I'm not going to drink that. Because <laughs> that's already happening in my stomach. But yet, this can be us. We can proclaim faith that we're not living. Our words sometimes do not match our actions. And, that, and what, the, what has the potential to be so amazing ends up being so different. So we can see just how devastating it can be, and that is looking pretty gross, I can tell you. Um, so how can we make sure that we're not doing this? Well, I think there are two powerful verses in Psalms 139 which I think can help. King David says this, God, see what is in my heart, know what is there, test me, know what I'm thinking, see if there's anything in my life you do not like. Help me live in the way that is always right. Because one of the most powerful ways to proclaim God's love, to be a shining light of God, is to live your faith. So like David, we need to be turning to God daily to reflect on what in our life needs to be improved by God. And asking him, God, is there anything in my heart that bothers you? Is there anything offensive to you that I am doing or thinking? And can you help me get that out of my life so I can glorify you? Because remember, we can't do this by ourselves. But the Bible says that God is faithful, that he is with us, and he can change us. The hundreds of fulfilled prophecies show us that we can trust what God says is true. So trust in his promises and his word. It is truth. It is power. So turn to him always. Amen.